All right, here we are on to the next session. Uh, looks like this one was just a buffer encoding discussion that you threw up, uh, Sage, without a blueprint, so. Yes, um, yeah, so there are a couple threads on the mailing list about um, calling out buffer encoding as uh, one of the things that is slow. Um, I guess not really, yeah, encoding and decoding. Um, and there were a couple different tangents to that conversation. One, um, uh, Matt had mentioned that they were playing around with some um, possible optimizations, I think just in the core buffer code, like optimizing append or something like that. I'm not sure exactly, so it'd be great to hear about that. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, um, how I had some more um, radical proposals for um, changing the way that messages are structured in general so that they're more fixed size, sort of straight mem copies um, in the encoding stage too. So, um, Matt, do you want to do you want to start by talking just a little bit about what you guys have done and what you were looking at? I think we just lost him. Oh, is Matt still here? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I think he just disconnected right before you said his name. All right then. Um, I don't have my either. Okay. Well, Sam's here. At least. So, yeah, I mean, the, the basic problem is that whenever you do sort of a, a profile of the cluster under load, one of the top things that pops up is, if I remember correctly, it's like buffer append and all the encode decode wrappers around, you know, UNT64 and all the rest, which in the general, usually those are on most architectures, they were encoding little Indian, so they're just doing mem copies. I'm writing to the buffer, um, but the buffer list append path is like several function calls deep, even though it's not doing a whole lot. Um, so it still eats up a lot of eats up a lot of time. So I guess what are the what are the bright ideas for how to how to address this? Because anyone's here going to sort of help all over the place. Um, Sam, do you have any thoughts? Oops, I was talking, but I was I was muted. <laughs> um, yeah. So, some there has been some speculation that it may be function call overhead. Um, they're all, a lot of them are in separate compile units, so there's no inlining happening. Uh, we could make an effort to pick a representative group that would allow most of the path to be inlined, and uh, inline them and see what effect that 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 has. That'll tell us whether that's actually the problem. Start. Um, let's see. There was also I had a conversation with Alan a while back too about coding. Let's see if I can find it. I should have. I should have prepared this. Yeah, if, if if I remember, there are also some. It's not just a function call overhead, but I think they're just just a fast path in the in code um, could probably be improved. Because um, we're always we're starting with the buffer list, and we're then um, comparing lengths, and then we're looking at the buffer pointer to the append buffer, and then rechecking the length there again, and then doing a bunch of asserts, and then eventually finally copying into the buffer. Um, and I, I suspect just some really simple micro optimization there could help so that we're not doing it on every every word isn't sort of <laughs> repeating all this arithmetic. Um, is there a worth a try? But I guess the Yeah. Okay. So inlining and optimization there. So the other options then are um, trying to do less buffer append and encode stuff in general. Um, 
sort of moving up a layer so that we are, for example, instead of encoding structures member by member, we could um, try to make the in-memory representation map to what we would be encoding as and do sort of straight up copies, um, at least for the hot structures. That'd be another op option. I guess we would have to, in order for that to make sense, we would have to figure out specifically which structures are popping up at the top of the um, encode path um, on top of the profiles. So I think there was there was a pull request recently that was calling out. Um, no, never mind. That wasn't in code. Never mind. Um, so probably like the entity adders or H object T's or um, let's see. Do we know what? Do you have a sense of what other structures are going to be at the top of the list? Yeah, we should like we probably just uh, profile and see what we get. Yeah. I don't think there's much point guessing. Yep. Has anybody done that profiling recently? And no, I see mental folks on the call. Review. Um, okay, and then the the last one was um, a much more vicious change that that how I was proposing, where just completely restructure the the message encoding essentially, so that um, instead of each message type, or at least the key message types, sort of ad hoc um, filling in all the the fields in the message structure on the wire to have fixed size chunks. And send those across. Did you did you read that email, Tam, in detail? I'm sorry. What's up? How my email about um, changing the way that messages are sent over the wire? I did not see that one. When was that? It was on Wednesday. The subject was Ceph full dash SSD performance. So all message would be restructured to have a common header. Um, the members of the message will be fixed. Um, things like GH object would have somehow be packed into fixed size memory, which is tricky because they are arbitrary length. Yeah, they're um, variable. Yeah. Most like. The the parts of H object T that are fixed size are already in in a, a contiguous chunk of memory. Yeah. Also, it's going to be very difficult to do that and maintain backwards compatibility. It's going to yes. make the encoding far less flexible, which mm -hmm. is going to be bad. Well, here he's I mean he's suggesting that we would make an incompatible change, right? No, I, I know, but I'm saying it, it'll it'll yeah, make the right. encoding much less flexible. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, that one that one definitely scares me. Um, but on the other hand, it's it's really like if there is going to be an incompatible change, like the only places where it's really important is on the the fast pass messages where it's like MOSD op and MOSD op reply and sub op and sub op reply, right? Those are the only ones that that are really going to have a significant impact. The other thing, like if we're if we're interested in an incompatible change, we should look at what other message marshalling systems do, like protocol buffers. Like we're not the first ones to have this problem. So we should do that research before we create a design. What do protocol buffers do? Yep. Okay. I think we should start with micro optimizing the existing structures and see how mm -hmm. far that that gets us. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
Okay. Well, we should make sure that's on the. Um, we talk about that on the performance call next week, um, so that the folks who are actually running the profilers can do that. Flat buffers. What are flat buffers? This is also a Google cross-platform serialization library. Uh, interesting. Yeah, you know, I'm, a different way of approaching this might also be to, a more radical change would be to um, restructure message classes and so that the in-memory representation is the on-wire representation and have all the accessors pulling out of the um, sort of the encoded buffer, right? Because right now what happens is when you get a message, we basically copy everything out into properly typed um, members, which is not particularly efficient, especially for messages that are dominated by lots of small fields, like on the metadata server. The challenge there is currently messages are mutable, so that's no good. We we can't have that. So the, the, the first thing is to change every user of the existing messages to work in terms of a uh, const message that is built in the constructor or built in some sense in an append-only fashion. That's the tricky part. Where append-only obviously means something. Where you have to set the well, fields I mean, having, or something along those lines. I mean, all the messages are right, but in so all the messages are mutable, but we basically never change them except when we're constructing fresh ones for sending over the wire. Yes, that's like, that's that's right. Yeah. So we yeah, so the first step the is to make the compiler um, enforce that for us. Then we can change the uh, representation at our leisure. Okay. Um, so flat buffers are doing the it's basically C plus plus code factory. Okay. There is actually only one catch to that, though. The in-memory represent or the uh, in-memory representation will no longer match <clears throat> the type you're handing back to accessors. So you potentially trade the single big upfront decode for a lot of little decodes over time, where you keep de decoding the same GH object team multiple times. So we yeah, would want to catch wanna... the, yeah. the fields. Right. It would be irritating. Right. Doable but irritating. Yeah. And... On a on a big Indian machine too, it means we're going to repeatedly do do all the byte swapping, bit swapping, whatever. Um, but I think that's. I mean, presumably most fields will want to access, so we probably want to pay the decode cost. It makes some sense to pay it up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Granted, we don't have to do it in the message receiver thread. Doesn't really have to be done there anyway. It's done there for convenience. It's done without right. locks. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying I'm I'm not, I'm not sure we actually get a benefit from changing the representation if we constantly have to marshal and demarshal anyway. Right. That's true. Um well I mean in most cases if it's like a if it's an integer field or whatever, then the marshal demarshal is just a following a pointer. Yeah, but those aren't the expensive ones anyway, right? If it's just <clears throat> following a pointer, then the decode wasn't going to be pricey. We're worried about the Maybe. larger structures like H objects and entity attributes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not sure. I, I, yeah, I have to see a profile. But I think that you see just like append of a, or encoding just like UN64. It's going to show up. 
just because there are a lot of them all over the place. But maybe not. Yeah, OK. Um, OK, well, so the next step really is we just need to profiling data to know what to do next. OK. Right, well, well, also the contents of the buffer back. may be inappropriately aligned, so you wouldn't necessarily be able to access it via direct reference anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, although that, that can be worked around on the message receive path. You can just allocate, make sure the buffer is allocated for a particular message type with the right alignment yes but if the field order yeah, is such that you have a variable field in the middle that's not possible yeah, yeah. right okay okay um okay well unless matt came back on which i don't think he did um anybody wow. else have any comments no he's here should be oh you are here matt are you here i'm here i think okay yeah. what were you you had mentioned that you had done some optimization for the buffer and code decode? Um, or not, just the not, buffers? Yeah, not changing the code and decode. We think it's, this is an interesting area, but we've kind of, we've kind of, we're kind of in, 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 in a similar place with Sam. I think that's the right direction. There's a, there's a few competing things there, but I, there's, a, there's a lot to be said for, or, or, for organizing this, and, and, every, and every system I'm familiar with does that. Um, but, but yeah, but we have we have, we have two changes and one third in progress that that, that, are, that are that are that are just aimed at aimed at and aimed at um, reduce, 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 reducing cost paid that you pay that you pay while managing the buffer lists. Um, we, we tried to virtual functions in one in one in one change this flatten change. But more inch probably I mean, more interesting insights when I when I do when I, in my in perf based profiling anyway, I see buffer release a lot. Um, so we're paying we're paying some costs for for sharing that we may not always be using, uh, although sharing is. Kind of pervasive, so we, so we don't know everything everything about that yet. Um, but we 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 have a change in progress that that um, would, that would um, essentially make, make you know, reduce simplify the simplify, unify the types of buffer raw and buffer pointer essentially, and and and, and allow intrusive uh, chaining of, um, of of raw in the common case. And that's what it was, was it, that, you, that you would swap for swap for buffer pointer and sharing if you're you know, like like an like an intrusive pointer, uh, if or a shared pointer if if you, if you were actually going to share. And it would sort of dynamically do that at the point where yeah, you share. Would, yeah, exactly. It would, be, it, would, it, would, it would be an on share event. I see. Okay. Um. So that's, that's, is that's that enough? Pardon? Is there is that in a state that it, it sort of works, or is this just an idea? That that's that, that's an idea we started typing, but we, the, 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 the two the two the prior two exist. We we pushed those. Yeah, we have, we haven't we haven't we haven't fully typed and tested this, but um, so it's a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Started okay. we started working on it. We obviously by, by making um, buffer pointer and use uh, intrusive list that was the first step. And similarly, with flattening was the second step. intrusive list type right That's yeah it's it. just using boost yeah um right that makes sense okay and that that sounds that sounds promising so, so we'll, def we'll definitely continue working on that over the next couple of weeks and we'll send up we'll send updates on it mm -hmm. okay okay it might also be yeah, it'd be interesting to know how often the buffer list copying structures are called, or copy operators are called, because that's copying an STL list and then twiddling a bunch of reference counts. Um, exactly. Several of those cases are cases where we should be passing by reference instead of by value. Well, the key, well, the key thing that, that makes it interesting about the remove the sharing was not only that you save atomics, but 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 if you but but, but it makes the traversals then. Um, you are references. Yeah, exactly. There's sort of moves a layer of memory indirection, and so and so we we expect cache wins from that, as you get with uh, you know with the tail queue or whatever. Yep. Yep. 
Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Well, if and when that there's anything worth sharing, it'd be, be great to see that on, on the list. Let's take a look. All right. Any other thoughts or comments or anything? All right. Are we break for lunch? Yeah, you get a little bit more than 15 minutes for lunch, even. I you get like 25. Food. <laughs> Excellent.